All right, what's up, Yens guys? Uh, here's a uh, another um, video review that I had on a shelf and never got around to uh, doing a video about one of my recommendations here for if you uh, uh, what do you call it? Want more uh, serial ATA space? Like you and you have a couple serial ATA connectors, and if you have if you have a bigger tower like me, and maybe you have four DVD burners and Maybe you want extra hard drives, and you only got so many serial ATA plugs in your board. Um, I found this. I recommend it. Very reasonably priced, and a very reasonable alternative to really expensive uh, items too. And um, uh, this is a really good way to go because um, this is designed. Uh, it's like you can put your primary hard drives on this and it performs faster and it supposedly makes your access time way quicker and it it does do the job and since it takes uh, two serial, serial ATA uh, devices you can plug in the hard drives I got more room for my DVD ROMs in there and um, it kind of moves over the space I mean so you got two zero ATA plugs on your board that you can have freed up and it's really ideal like if you say like my machine here see uh, uh, I always have a lot of uh, DVD burners that I've taken for, from computers that I've gotten for next to nothing they throw them away in the CD room there's a couple of CD rooms I actually paid good money for that I actually bought but a lot of these I have a bunch of them laying around too. If one of them breaks, I stick another one in. But four DVD ROMs. The thing in the front is for other kind of ports I never even damn use. But I've been meaning to eventually get another tower, but I've grown attached to this one. But if you got stuff like that, and, and eventually, like. Um, like if you uh, upgrade your system with all kind of other stuff, you know. Uh, I mean, if you add hard drives or if you want to take uh, your friend's hard drive, plug it into yours and and uh, rescue their data or rescue something. Oh, but, yeah, what I was getting at, too, uh, you have to have one of those kind of uh, PCI Express uh, 2.0 there uh, on your board. You have to have a board that has that thing in there and um, I got it for you go I went on amazon.com and got this pretty damn cheap and um, yeah it's actually uh, yeah pretty good thing to get um, oh yeah and um, when you're looking for these things you don't want to get mistakenly get something called a raid you know, I got one of them laying around that I try to use. It has four zero ATA plugs in the expander card. But you can't use it, like, say, for adding hard drives or whatever. Um, a lot of you guys already know your computers. You know, it takes a whole video maybe for me to explain what it is. But you know what a RAID is. R-A-I-D. It's not really... Well, there's... I think there was other cards you can shop around with that you can use it as a RAID or just use it for... Yeah, use it for both or just... But I know I have another card that you can't do what I was just explaining a couple minutes ago. It's just strictly a RAID. And um, the whole detail... I don't got to explain to you the whole details about that. You guys look it up and read about it. I mean, I don't want to make a whole video about that. But um, So when you go shopping... See, if you're, what I'm saying is if you go shopping for something you just want... You don't have enough of serial ATA plugs on your board, and you want to add extra hard drive. You always use extra DVD ROMs because maybe you have a game in this one, and you use two of them for burning. You know, you just use back and forth to reduce the wear and tear in your drives. But then you want to have your extra hard drive too for your uh, uh, music files, your everything else you're doing, your video production and um, stuff like that. But yeah, so anyway, some of you guys that don't know enough about that, you might mistakenly buy a RAID thinking it's 
you know, that you can expand like it, and you'll be wondering why it's not recognizing your hard drive, you know. So that's stuff that if you guys don't already know, know about, you'd have to look up. But like I says, I got one of them for free that I found. I mean, practically nothing or whatever. I got. I think I got some other one like that too. That I picked it up real cheap for a couple of dollars. A thrift store still in the box, and it was just a raid. And um, but yeah, when you go shopping for anything like that, you want to add to your because uh, you only ha like I just said, you have only a few uh, serial ATA plugs, and you only got enough for a couple DVD ROMs. Or, so you got a bigger tower, and you want more stuff like do like I do. And you want to expand, and so it recognizes all your stuff, and so you don't buy a raid by mistake and wonder what the hell's going on. But uh, that's that's pretty much what I'm trying to say. And if you don't know enough about it, and you go shop, make sure you read carefully. But this is what I found for the most reasonable price, and it it does really good for me. It made my system. Uh, I'm running I'm running Windows Seven, and I got a nice. Uh, brand new board I got, you know, within a month ago with two CRA, two, excuse me, um, I got two PCI Express slots in there and two PCI Express 2.0 slots like you see here to accommodate a device like you see here. And since you have a board with two of those, it's kind of nice because if you happen to you have a video, a video capture card like this, you can run it too. Like say if you got two slots on your board like I do, you can put your rocket hybrid on there, and then you have another one you can put that in there, and then plus I got two of the regular PCI Express slots. You know I got my um, fancy video card that I um, uh, upgraded in there, a lot better graphics card. And if you're one of them, and so my board's equipped that if you want to buy one of them second graphics card, that uh, if it's the same brand and it's made to accommodate and plug in, you know, I like you can buy out a, a fancy graphics card right off the bat and get a real fancy one, or you can get one of those where if it's the same brand, you can get a second, if you have a second PCI Express slot, it goes with it and it. You know, instead of buying a whole fancy uh, one all the, all at once, you know what I mean. But, but yeah, that's a basic idea. You know, what I mean, um, it's a lot of you guys already know what I'm trying to get at there. You know, as far as buying video cards, so yeah, that relates to everything you want to make decisions about your computer that way. I mean, yeah, the space for everything you want to do. Uh, yeah, reason why I was talking about video cards too, you know, I mean that that has a lot to do with it because you know a lot of like if you're like me, you wanna uh, expand everything and everything in like your tower and add to it and be able to do everything you want. And it's a space thing, you know, how many slots you got. And when I went shopping for another computer board, instead of buying a whole new computer, you know. Um, that's what I was taking into consideration too. So um, the way to go uh, sometimes is do like I just did. Instead of going out in the store and buying a computer, it's like buying a car. You almost want to look what you got under the hood, and maybe maybe you don't care. You just want to do your stuff or whatever. And some of us we want to know what kind of slots are in the board. And so when you buy your computer at the store, you can't always. You know what, when you go to any store, they really should have on the box or somewhere on the display a picture or diagram of what your board looks like. Like, say if you got a dis display model in the store, you should be allowed to see what's under the hood, you know what I mean, and see your options. And depending on your money to spend the shop for a computer, you know, I figured I'd slip that in this video too. That's, um, and so that's why I went the route uh, going online and buying my board, my computer board too, you know, my whole motherboard. I wanted to see, you know, the best price and maybe you want uh, four slots for your RAM instead of just two slots because maybe you want to put, you want to fill four slots with a one gigabyte RAM sticks 
uh, instead of just two uh, one gigabyte RAM sticks because maybe you're greedy and maybe you do video rendering and you know you want your board to your uh, system to lock up or freeze up or slow down in the middle of something you have to start your projects over or whatever the hell you know but yeah and then yeah and you're looking at you know what processor is in the board you know and maybe you have a couple of uh, uh, CPUs already laying around that you want to use or you want to shop for a CPU separately you know say you got a CPU that you don't want to spend no extra money you know you got a nice CPU that's pretty fast and you shop for the board and you want to see what type of uh, slot what type of contact that board has compared to your uh, CPU like say you got the CPU that might have you know the contacts instead of the pins which is kinda nice because I know I've seen the CPUs that have the pins on the CPU and you stick it and the board the motherboard has the holes you put it in you gotta be careful not to bend the pins on the CPU because you're on the CPU and that would be a bitch you have to have almost them glasses like people look at jewelry with and some real small tools to try to bend them little pins or if you have the board that takes the CPUs to just have the contact and the pins are in the board oh boy you really F, your, F yourself over there if you screw up because you ruin the pins it's almost like you're ruining the whole board and you'd be screaming and swearing and jumping up and down and saying shucks golly son of a gun and all them fancy words so yeah but yeah I was just rambling on about those extra things that um, you might want to slip in there because, um, yeah, I do got friends that uh, know less than I do, less experience with going inside their computer. And then some of Yin's guys that are better than me on this, you don't even need to hear all this. But, yeah, there's a lot of people. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that's com common knowledge to me and a lot of other people. And even I don't know at all. I'm, I'm looking online and looking at the latest trends, you know, and all that shit like, you know. DDR2 RAM was the biggest thing. It was more expensive. Now they got DDR3. So now you can get DDR2 RAM dirt cheap now on the internet. I mean, you just got to watch the... Well, when you're bored, there's, it's not all the same or any RAM. You almost got, you got to look at them numbers on the RAM stick. I mean, I recently found a computer that somebody threw away. I just had to blow out the CPU, a dual-core CPU. I got it sitting on my table here that I... Uh, but uh, they had four one gigabyte RAM sticks in it. I guess they were trying to upgrade. They didn't know what the hell they were doing. They bought some. You can tell this one RAM stick was newer than the other ones. And they must have bought it or something. And I, they probably just gave up and threw it away. And they didn't even have the decency to figure out that they got to clean that heat sink, you know, and the fan. Or else the thing will eventually run. So I picked it up and it's running. You know, I just need a tower for it. But anyway, the RAM stick they bought it, and I guess they bought. They were looking at the price. But sometimes you got to look at them numbers on them RAM modules. A lot of people don't know that. And if you try to put that next to other RAM modules you already got with a different numbers, they're different um, voltages. It may even work for a while, and it might freeze up, shut down out of nowhere all of a sudden, or not even work at all, or whatever, you know what I mean? But it's another thing to consider, you know, I'm just, uh, just because it popped into my head. That's the kind of stuff that I was telling other friends that about that, um, and I also told friends about what a pain it is, as it is to spend all this money for a laptop, and not... Uh, and having to trust somebody else to go inside it and fix it every time something goes wrong and and some of you guys out there probably have better skills at opening up laptops you know you got to be really careful you blow out that heat sink fan I was talking to one neighbor down the alley that problem and if you don't detect the problem and deal with it soon you know it could ruin the whole damn thing I, that's why that's why I hate laptops they're nice that you want to go out and take your webcam or do your exercise videos or some kind of things out there but you know there's sometimes you're better at, better off buying an actual 
Uh, well, but anyway, I'm out of time. You get the idea what I mean. I'm rambling here, but uh, that's it for this video. I uh, hope you guys.